Hi, uh, welcome to our talk. So uh, today uh, we're going to talk about uh, towards effortless transition management in microservices. So uh, I'll be we'll be presenting we'll be talking about you know the uh, the approaches for managing or handling transactions in microservices, and then we're going to propose a way to uh, you know a kind of practical and effortless way for doing that uh, based on our experiences. So. Um, I'm Hiroki Yamada. I'm the CTO and co-CEO of a company called Scaler, which is a kind of small startup based in Tokyo and San Francisco. Uh, we're kind of database middleware company uh, guys, and I'm passionate about the uh, database systems and distributed systems, and I've got a PhD from those areas. And Toshi? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my name is Toshihiro Suzuki, um, and I'm an architect at Scala, and I'm also an Apache HBase committer. Yeah, thank you. So uh, before uh, going to the details, uh, let's look at the, you know, we're talking about the microservices, so let's review microservice, microservice architecture. So uh, I took this from Wikipedia. Uh, let me just read this. Uh, so microservice architecture is an architectural pattern that uh, RNGs, uh, Application as a collection of loosely coupled or fine grained services, communicating through, communicating through uh, lightweight protocols. And one of its goals is to enable teams to develop and deploy their service services independently. So it's kind of the uh, you know uh, divide and conquer, divide and conquer strategy for uh, you know application architecture. And then typically, like a microservice application tends to apply employ uh, database per service pattern where you know, uh, in, mic in each microservice, uh, there's a small application, and then uh, in also a small database, uh, I mean, not necessarily small, but a database in each microservice. And then if you wanna go, yeah, if you wanna go to database two uh, from application one, uh, basically you need to go to first go to the application two to get the data from DB2. So you cannot really go to direct DB2 directly from application one to achieve like loose coupling and to isolate services. So uh, let's look at the, uh, the benefits of microservices. So uh, I took this from a uh, paper. So there are so many opinions out there, but I took it from paper. Uh, and then it's a database paper uh, called, uh, uh, from the VLDB conference, which is a uh, one of the top tier conferences in database, database or data management systems. And then, so it's kind of from a little uh, data management perspective. And then it's kind of ranked uh, based on a survey. And then, so the first one, the scalability through uh, functional decomposition. And it's a kind of capability uh, that, uh, you know, uh, scaling a system uh, by decomposing a system, but decomposing a microservice, uh, decomposing a monolithic service into microservices by functions. And then the fault isolation, the second one, fault isolation, is the kind of property that, uh, you know, uh, one service from microservices kind of isolated from the other services. So let's assume there is a two microservices, a customer service, a order service, and like customer service is kind of uh, isolated from order. So even if customer is failed, uh, order is not affected by the customer. And then the third one, uh, agility on data change, it's kind of a property that, um, you know, uh, so the schema of one database of one microservice is not affected by the other uh, microservices. So you can change the schema of a database uh, as long as you keep the API of the microservices the same. And then the further fourth one, the to enable event-driven data management, that's, I think that's a little exceptional because the, um, you know, it's kind of more like a how, right? Event-driven data management's not really, you know, uh, the benefit of microservices. It's more like, you know, it's related to it, but it's not really the benefit or motivation for microservices. So let me skip this for now. And then polyglot persistence, uh, it's a, property that, um, you know, uh, Microsoft application can use multiple potentially different kinds of databases. So, yeah, these are the, uh, the benefits or motivations of microservices. It's just a reviewing it. And uh, so let's look at the downsides, the counts of microservices. 
And it's also kind of uh, from a you know, data management perspective. And then the first one is the, uh, it's hard to guarantee a transnational consistency of databases. So like I explained, the, you know, basically we employ uh, database per service. So uh, we tend to have multiple databases. And then even if we have the same database kind, the database instances are different. So the, you know, the databases don't really support, they don't really guarantee the multi-instance consistency. So it's, uh, it's hard to uh, guarantee consistency of databases. And then uh, similarly, it's hard to operate diverse uh, databases, uh, especially like in taking correct backups of multiple databases, because you know, uh, let's say we have two Oracle databases, but it's hard to uh, take backups correctly from two Oracle database instances because there is no way, uh, guaranteed way. And then the third one is more code to uh, create applications. So basically, uh, microservice it will be uh, created based on from a monolithic application, so it's kind of decoupled, and then basically, uh, you know, application has to kind of virtually glue the microservices. So we need to kind of have a glue code. And then, uh, you know, uh, the first issue I think is the biggest issue. Um, and then, you know, um, if you don't have consistency of databases, uh, you're gonna um, have so much troubles. More specifically, um, so why it's so critical? Like why you need the consistency of databases? So Remy also reviewed this. And then without uh, transnational consistency, um, you know, some data can be seen as lost or wrong. And such incidents are uh, called anomalies in databases. And then, so let's, uh, let's assume like, you know, uh, you're gonna have a transfer operation uh, you're gonna do, you know, for some banking applications or something. And then in transferring operation, um, it's, which is composed of, you know, decrease operation, decreasing the amount from one account and then increasing an account, increasing the amount to another account. And then, you know, what if, you know, increase, the increasing operation failed during a processing, uh, you know, for some catastrophic failure or something. Then if it's not properly handled, uh, you're gonna lose the money the money is gone, right? And so uh, another case, uh, so you're gonna reserve, uh, you're, gonna plan, you're gonna plan to go to a trip and you're gonna reserve a hotel and you're gonna uh, reserve a flight ticket, maybe in the same application or at the same time, maybe by Expedia or Rakuten Travel. Anyway, like uh, if you fail to reserve uh, flight ticket, you thought maybe you successfully reserved, but the, in, the, in the back end, uh, you know, if some, it fails for some reason, then it's gonna be a trouble, right? So, uh, you know, um, you know, such database anomalies, uh, you know, are happening actually uh, in all the time, basically, and then uh, these kind of database anomalies could harm your business tremendously, and especially uh, in enterprise applications. So um, how can we you know, guarantee, or how can we uh, make this not happen, right? How can we guarantee consistency of databases? And essentially, like, you know, we need to uh, coordinate operations. So um, you know, there are like, uh, separate operations here, but the, these has, have to be coordinated properly, uh, kind of with some form of a transaction. So yeah, so that uh, we can guarantee the consistent uh, states. And then there are several existing approaches uh, like a Saga, maybe you have heard of it, and then two-phase commit to PC, and then TCC, try, confirm, cancel. So let's look at the, these approaches one by one. So Saga, maybe you have heard of it, maybe it's getting popular in microservices uh, in a community. And then uh, it's a mechanism to uh, maintain transnational consistency in microservices. So. Uh, this is the example here, um, you know, uh, kind of application uh, having order service and then customer service, and then user can, or customer can create an order if the user has enough available credit. So, um, you know, user will create an, uh, create an order and the order service will um, maybe cr first create an order with a pending state. Then uh, maybe it will check the credit credit limit of user or customer uh, through the message broker and then customer service will 
first check the uh, credit, uh, credit limit, and then, then uh, update the credit limit. And then once it's all done, then it will, the order service will create, uh, update the order uh, with uh, approved status, and it returns back. So, uh, you know, uh, in Saga, uh, it uses a sequence of local transactions uh, that are coordinated using uh, asynchronous messaging through uh, message blocker, typically. And then uh, one thing to note is that, uh, you know, it rolls back transactions uh, by using application-defined uh, compensating transactions, so which means, like, you know, basically you need to write uh, recovery logic by yourself, so in case of failures. So, uh, you know, there are pros and cons of this approach. So the first pros is the no locking or resource reservation required. So there is no global coordination, there is no resource locking, and then, which is good. And then, you know, it can be applied to uh, various databases because um, basically it does, you know, local transactions in each, each microservice. So there is no notion of uh, you know global coordination. So um, could be applied to the various databases, and then due to the no locking or no global coordination, uh, you know it can be faster than the other approaches. And as a cons, uh, you know uh, users must define or application developers must define application defined compensating transactions. So basically, you need to write how to recover from a failure. So for example, like you know you create an order, update the credit usage, and updating the order. Then in case of uh, failure here, basically you need to uh, undo all the operations you've done, and then uh, in reverse order to the, get to the cancel state, basically you have to write all the undo operations by yourself. And then uh, it doesn't guarantee isolation or atomicity, so um, you know, uh, intermediate states of one transactions can be seen, uh, can be visible by the other transactions. And then it requires item-potent participants. So basically you, you know, correctness guarantees uh, based on the retries. So, uh, you know, the participants or operations must be item-potent. And then it's difficult to implement and debug. So, you know, there is no global coordination. So it's, it's hard to track where, where it is. So it's hard to uh, implement and debug. So let's move on to the two-phase commit to 2PC. And the 2PC is an atomic uh, commitment protocol that coordinates global transactions. So uh, giving, giving you a same example. And uh, so like a, after beginning a transaction and then the application will uh, checking and updating the credit limit and then creating an order and then like a application is ready to commit the transaction and it will uh, ask the coordinator to uh, commit the transaction. And then the coordinator will prepare the, uh, the prepare phase which make all of the uh, participants ready to commit. And after that, it will commit the log, like it's kind of for persistence. And then it for, you know, finally commits the participants, you know, uh, committing all the, uh, you know, records that are prepared. And after that, it will fit okay. And then the protocol guarantees, uh, you know, recovery from intermediate states. So basically, application developers don't need to care about, the, you know, how to recover from transaction failure and stuff. Okay. So also this also approaches this approach also has a pros and cons. And in the pros, uh, you know, it's extremely simple, effortless for application developers to implement transactions, and it provides strong correctness. Uh, specifically ACID. And as a cons, uh, you know, it could be slower than the, the, the other approaches because it does some global, global coordination and does some resource locking. And then, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a blocking protocol. So if a coordinator crash, if coordinator is crashed, uh, you know, that will cause or block the transaction from proceeding. And then, um, there is not many well-known protocols, but the well-known protocol, uh, for example, XOpenXA is, is pretty legacy. So let's move on to TCC. So TCC, try, confirm, cancel, uh, is a mechanism to maintain transactional consistency in microservices uh, like the others. 
And it's a kind of the middle ground, middle ground approach between the uh, you know two PC and Saga. So it kind of does some two PC, but uh, it implements two PC at the business layer rather than the resource layer. So application can define, decide you know which resource to take. So it allows businesses to flexibly select a resource locking granularity. So I'm going to skip this. Oh, sorry. I'm going to skip the explanation here, but uh, it rolls back transactions by using uh, application-defined compensating in transactions like Saga. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, there's a pros and cons with this approach too, and uh, the pros it provides correctness. I wouldn't say ACID because uh, you know still the correctness is, you know, uh, based uh, based on the application-defined uh, recovery logic. And then uh, it might be useful for long transactions. Uh, so it can utilize the application context because the application can decide the resource locking granularity. So it might be useful for long transactions. And as a cons, uh, it mu users must define application defined compensating transactions like Saga. And then it also requires uh, item potent participants like Saga. So uh, let's compare the approaches in terms of. Uh, effortlessness, correctness, and availability, which means here uh, liveness and applicability, and a performance. So uh, let's look at this. So for, for effortlessness and then correctness, so TPC is the best approach for this uh, because uh, basically you don't need to write uh, recall logic by yourself, and then correctness is guaranteed by the protocol. On the other hand, the Saga um, is not as effortless as the, the other approaches because you basically need to make sure the correctness of transactions by yourself. So it's a lot of burden for users. So it's here. TCC is the middle ground of these two approaches. So I just put it here. And for the uh, effortlessness and the applicability, uh, 2 pc is regarded as not Av very available, uh, maybe because of uh, you know lacking of the not lacking like blocking issue or uh, you know the global coordination. And Saga, on the other hand, uh, is regarded as a uh, highly available uh, because it doesn't do any global coordination or or resource locking. Uh, but you know, I'm not sure if it could. It's it's uh, highly available because it could also return uh, wrong or uh, you know inconsistent states even if it's available. Anyway, uh, so for the performance correctness, um, you know TPC is not as perf as performant as the other approaches because it does do some global coordination and does some resource locking. And on the other hand, Saga is uh, faster faster than the other approaches because um, you know doesn't do those. So I, I wouldn't say like, you know, uh, there is like, there is no best solution here, right? Like there are pros and cons of these, these, in these approaches. I wouldn't say one is the best. So uh, basically like let's think about making them better. So how can we make them better, right? Um, so basically what we wanna achieve is in all the graphs, we want to achieve the right top area, the blue area. So how can we achieve that? So there are several ways. So one potential way is like uh, you know making Saga more correct. So yeah, that's one way. And another way, making TCC, making Saga and TCC more effortlessness, or more effortless. That's one way. And then also uh, making 2PC uh, more uh, available and making 2PC more performant. So, uh, you know, can we really do that, right? So, uh, can we make Saga more correct? I believe that's pretty difficult uh, due to the mechanism that uh, you know, doesn't have global coordination. And then how about, uh, can we make Saga or TCC more effortless? I think that's also very difficult due to the mechanism that requires application-defined recovery logic. 
So uh, can we make GPC more available and faster without sacrificing its effortlessness? I think that's possible. So let's break down the questions. So can we make TPC more uh, provide high availability, which means better liveness, and high scalability, which means scalable throughput, without compromising safety? Can we make the latency of TPC better, or lower, or can we make TPC support diverse data stores? So uh, yeah, Toshi will answer the questions and then how we're gonna do that. But before doing that, let me also say one thing. So maybe you might have heard, you know, TPC is not an option in microservice transactions. Uh, it's a kind of slide deck, slide from a famous uh, microservice advocate. But I, I disagree with this opinion uh, since it's pretty misleading. And because like, you no, know, downsides described here are all addressed in the recent technologies. So let me replace this, right? So like 30-year-old uh, TPC approaches are not an option, but the recent TPC approaches are definitely an option. So next speaker, Toshi, will talk about you know, how we can do that, how we can answer the questions. Yeah, so from now on, I will take over this presentation. Uh, I would like to discuss the new two PC approaches uh, mentioned in the previous slide. First, I will discuss can we, uh, how can we make two PC provide high availability and scalability. As we mentioned earlier, one common issue with two PC is that the coordinator can become a single point of failure, uh, leading to concerning about availability and scalability. To address this issue, uh, we can introduce consensus protocols uh, such as Paxos commit to replicate the coordinate logs yet to enhance uh, availability. Additionally, uh, by using data partitioning for the coordinator logs, um, <coughs> we can improve the scalability of the coordinator. Yeah, many recent distributed database products that use 2PC have adopted this approach and the idea that the 2PC coordinator is a single point of failure is becoming a myth. So next, uh, I will address how can we make the latency of 2PC lower. Yeah, to reduce the latency of 2PC, uh, one possible approach is to parallelize the prepare process for each record and make the commit process asynchronous. Yeah, as shown in the dia diagram below, in 2PC, after transaction read and write operations are complete, the prepare process for each record is performed, followed by uh, coordinator logging. And after it's successful, um, the commit process for each record is carried out. So by parallelizing the prepare process, uh, we can reduce the latency to the time it takes to prepare, prepare a single record. And furthermore, by making the commit process asynchronous, uh, we can return a response uh, to, the, to the client immediately after the coordinator logging is complete. Yeah, after returning the response to the client, the commit process for each record is performed asynchronously allowing the client to avoid waiting for the commit process to finish. <clears throat> and here, yeah, another optimization is the one-phase commit optimization, uh, where the commit can be performed in a single phase under certain conditions. Yeah, for more details, please refer to the paper linked here. Yeah, this slide deck is published on the Cube Day website. Yeah, so let's move on to how can we make 2PC support diverse uh, data stores? Yeah, the approaches for achieving global transactions can be categorized in two ways. Uh, Multi-level transaction management and single-level transaction management, as shown, as shown in the figures below. In both approaches, uh, there is a coordinate, coordination process that manages global transactions using the 2PC protocol, and there are databases that participate in the global transaction. <clears throat> yeah, 
yeah, the multi-level transaction management approach achieves global transactions by coordinating transactions at the coordinator in cooperation with the transaction managers of the underlying databases. Therefore, uh, there are abstractions in both the coordinator and the underlying databases for cooperation. Yeah, examples of products that follow this approach include Oracle Micro TX and Atomicos, which are based on XA. And yeah, this approach may force uh, the underlying databases to meet strict requirements. Yeah, for example, XA requires underlying databases to be ACID compliant with specific implementation for concurrency control. Yeah, this uh, constraint makes it difficult to support various databases such as uh, NoSQL databases that do not guarantee ACID. Yeah, on the other hand, the single level transaction management approach achieves global transactions by managing the uh, managing the coordinating managing and coordinating transactions uh, only at the coordinator level without rely, relying on the concurrency control mechanism of the uh, underlying databases. Yeah, this approach typically abstracts the uh, underlying databases at the coordinator layer to facilitate global transactions. An example of a product that follows this approach is ScaleDB. Yeah, this approach uh, requires the underlying databases to meet weaker requirements than those for the multi-level transaction management approach. So as a result, uh, it can support a wider variety of databases, including NoSQL databases. Yeah, uh, this table compares the recent enhanced 2PC products that I, that I mentioned in the previous slide. Oracle Micro TX is based on XA and adapts multi-level transaction management. So as a result, it can, cannot be used with databases that do not support XA, yet such as most NoSQL databases. Yeah, similarly, uh, Atomicos is based on uh, XA and adapts multi-level transaction management. Yeah, meaning it can only be used with databases that support XA as well. Finally, uh, ScaleDB adapts single-level uh, transaction management, which allows, to, which allows it to support a wide variety of databases, including NoSQL databases, and uh, all of, all of these uh, enhanced 2PC products support redundancy and scaling for coordinators, enabling high availability and high scalability. Also, they implement many optimizations for better performance. So now, uh, let's discuss uh, whether the enhanced 2PC approaches sacrifice the pros of microservices. To quickly review, the, the motivations, of my, motivations for microservice, microservices in data management include uh, scalability through functional decomposition, fault isolation, agility on data change, and to enable event-driven data management, and polyglot persistence. And yeah, our answer to the question is not really. Yeah, we don't think the enhanced 2PC approaches sacrifice the pros of microservices. Yeah, first, regarding scalability through functional decomposition. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, uh, enhanced 2PC allows us to improve scalability by partitioning the, partitioning the coordinator. Yeah, this means that 2PC can scale along with the microservice scalability uh, through functional decomposition. Yeah, next, concerning fault isolation. Yeah, even when using 2PC, faults in microservices are isolated. Yeah, however, uh, it is challenging to completely isol isolate faults related to the coordinating component that are required for transaction management. Yeah, this is not unique to 2PC. The same applies to Saga and TCC. Yes. Yeah, for example, uh, in Saga, a failure in the message blocker can stop transactions from proceeding. And similarly, in 2PC and TCC, a coordinator failure can stop transactions from progressing. 
yeah, generally, uh, these issues can be addressed by making the coordinate, coordinating components uh, redundant. So next, yeah, moving on to agility on data change. Yeah, even when using 2PC, yeah, schemas can still be independently update, updated within each microservices, microservice. And regarding to enable event-driven data management, yeah, as we explain, explained earlier, yeah, event-driven data management is yeah kind of outside that one outside the scope of transaction management. So yeah, using TPC does not pose any problems here. Yeah, finally, on polyglot persistence, yeah, as as I mentioned earlier, yeah, TPC can support multiple databases. Yeah, especially if you use a product with ScaleDB. Uh, a product like ScaleDB, which adopts single level transaction management, yeah, you can support a much wider variety of databases. So yeah, now let's also consider the cons of microservices. Yeah, first regarding uh, how to guarantee consistency of multiple databases. Yeah, using uh, 2PC allows us to guarantee consistency uh, across multiple databases. Next, concerning more code to create applications. Yeah, this is uh, mitigated by the frameworks provided by each 2PC product. So finally, for how to operate diverse databases. Yeah, actually it is uh, challenging to manage operations uh, when different databases are used in each microservice to strictly follow the data, database per service pattern. So one possible solution we propose is to use 2PC with a scalable distributed database where each microservice use, uses logically separated tables or databases. Yeah, as shown in the diagram below, yeah, you can create multiple logically separated database instances on a single distributed database. Yeah, then uh, each microservice can use its own database instance. Yeah, this way you technically only need to manage one database, simplifying database operations. Yeah, while this approach might violate uh, polyglot persistence, well, we think it's a trade-off between simplicity in database operations and maintaining polyglot persistence. Yeah, finally, let me conclude this presentation. Yeah, in this session, we first explained the challenges of transaction management in microservices and introduced the approaches of Saga, 2PC, and TCC as solutions. We then discussed uh, that enhanced 2PC as a promising way for effortless transaction management. Yeah, we believe th that the state of 2PC based products are highly scalable, available, and fast, and then do not sacrifice the benefit of microservices. Yeah, in particular, ScaleDB is the only solution that can perform transactions across non XA compliant data stores. Yeah, finally, we propose that using enhanced 2PC with a scalable distributed database achieves further effortless transaction management and operations in microservices. Yeah, that concludes our presentation. Thank you for your attention.